Chapter 21 Visitors The next day in the morning I saw the ship. The ship stopped far from the beach. The ship looked empty. I didn't understand it. I expected the people who fired the gun yesterday. I really wanted to communicate to somebody. I missed communication with real people very much. I took my canoe and I decided to go to the ship. I wanted to see if somebody survived. The ship looked Spanish and it was completely destroyed. When I got closer, I saw a dog. He was very happy to, happy to see me. I gave him bread and I gave him water. He was hungry and extremely thirsty. I found nobody on the ship. What happened to the man from the ship? I thought. It was very strange. I didn't have an answer to this question. It was a mystery. There were many boxes with different things on the ship. Some boxes were small, some boxes were big. Many big boxes were full of bottles with alcohol. But these boxes were too heavy. I couldn't take the boxes on the canoe. I found guns and gunpowder. I took them to the canoe. I also found some other useful things. I returned to the island in the evening with several small boxes on my canoe. I had some new shirts and also gold, silver and a lot of gunpowder. The gunpowder was important for me. On the island, gunpowder was more useful than money or gold. There was something else which I needed very much. I needed shoes. I found two pairs of shoes on board the ship. I took the shoes with me. I put all my new things in the cave. I made five trips to the ship. I took everything useful for me. Then I hit the canoe. Everything went back to normal. Time went quickly. I often thought about the man from the ship and the cannibals on the beach. It was one night in March when I dreamed that two canoes with cannibals landed on the beach. One of their prisoners ran away. He came to my house. I saved him. Then he became my friend. He helped me go through the dangerous waters around the island. I woke up, but the dream stayed in my mind. I realized that with someone's help, it could be possible to escape from the island. Maybe I could save one of the prisoners of the cannibals. I decided to watch the beach more. I went every day around the beach for the next two years. I hoped to see the canoes. My wish became reality one afternoon. I saw five canoes with more than 30 men on the beach. I couldn't attack so many, so many men. I had to wait. I watched the visitors with my telescope. The visitors made me made a fire and they started to dance around it. I also saw two other men. They were tied. They were prisoners. The two tied men were taken to the fire after a while. One was beaten and killed. The cannibals painted their bodies with his blood. It was like a theater, but this wasn't a theater. It was real. It was horrible, but I couldn't do anything. There were too, too many cannibals. The second man waited on the side. When the cannibals didn't look, the second man jumped up and he started to run away. He was running in my direction. I ran to the beach and I hid behind a tree. I saw that he was followed only by two cannibals. This was the right moment to save the prisoner. The men ran as fast as possible, but the cannibals were closer and closer to him. 
their speed was faster than his. Chapter 22 Friday I prepared two guns and I waited behind the tree. The prisoner ran directly to my tree, but he didn't see me. I didn't move. Then he ran around me. I was still hidden behind the tree. When the first cannibal ran close to me, I jumped from behind the tree. He was shocked. I shot him. The second cannibal saw this. He tried to shoot an arrow at me. I ran to shoot him too. The prisoner stopped when he heard the shots and he turned. He was scared. I smiled at him. I showed him that it was okay to come closer. He came to me. He went down to his knees. He put his head on the ground. Then he took my foot. He put my foot on his head. I showed him to stand up. He stood up. He looked at the dead cannibals. He went to their bodies. He looked at the holes in their bodies. He probably couldn't understand what happened to the cannibals. It was unbelievable to him. He took the arrows from the dead man. He took the bodies of the cannibals. We hid the bodies in the forest near. Then we went into the deeper forest. I took the man to my cave. The cave was my secret. Nobody could find us there. I gave him bread, meat and some water. He was so tired that he fell asleep almost immediately. I had an opportunity to look at him. I saw that he was young, slim, but very strong. I thought that he was about 25 years old. He had long black hair, dark skin and a pleasant face. I let him sleep and I went outside. I stayed near the cave and I watched for the cannibals. But they didn't look for us. Three hours later, the man came out of the cave. He showed me how happy he was that he was alive and safe. I started speaking to him. I named him Friday. It was Friday when I saved his life. I told him my name and I told him yes and no. We stayed in the cave that night. The next day we went on top of the hill. I saw through my telescope that the canoes were gone. We were alone on the island. We went carefully to the beach. First we went to the place where we hid the bodies of the dead cannibals. When we found the bodies, Friday wanted to eat the cannibals. I was angry. I showed to Friday that it wasn't good to eat them. Here I understood that Friday was also a cannibal. We buried the cannibals. Then we walked to the beach. What we saw was horrible. There were human bones all around. The sand was red with blood. I asked Friday to collect all the body parts. I prepared a big fire. I decided to burn the body parts in the fire. We went to my house. I made a little tent for Friday between the two fences which were around my house. I took all his weapons away. I wanted to feel safe. After a while, I realized that I didn't have to do it. Friday was a very good and honest man. He was like a child to me. I was like a father to him. In many situations later, he showed me that he was willing to give his life for me. I was very happy to have Friday on the island. I began teaching him everything what he needed to know about life like a European. First, I taught him some new words. I started with hi, hello, bye, thank you. It wasn't easy at the beginning, 
but I was patient because I was happy that I could speak to somebody. Chapter 23 Conversation Two days later, I shot a young goat. Friday was scared of the gun. He didn't understand how such a small thing could kill a goat. He didn't want to touch the gun. Later, I saw how he talked to the gun. He probably asked the gun not to kill him. We took the goat. We made a nice soup. Before the soup was finished, Friday went to the forest and he brought some herbs. He put the herbs into the soup. The herbs were similar to pepper. The soup smelled fantastic and it tasted fantastic too. We cooked some of the goat meat the next day with sauce. Again Friday brought some herbs and also plants. The herbs made the sauce taste great. They made a big difference and we made a nice salad from the plants. I taught Friday how to prepare corn and bake bread. He could do it as well as me a few days later. Then we started expanding my garden to have more corn in all activities. Friday helped me a lot. He was also very good at catching fish. Our cooperation was simply great. We were a good team. I wanted to teach Friday to speak English very well. I wanted to teach him English as fast as possible. I wanted to be a good teacher. I took my role very seriously. I thought about the best method to teach him English. When I spoke to him fast and when I used all the words and grammar, he didn't understand me. So I tried to speak mainly in the present and I used simple words. I also said only short sentences. This way, Friday understood more. We spoke about many topics. When Friday didn't understand something, I pointed at it, or I tried to explain the word to him. If it didn't help, I made a picture of the thing in the sand. Soon, Friday started to understand many of my sentences in the present. He also started to use some words. His pronunciation was very bad at the beginning, but it wasn't important for me. I understood him and I was very happy that somebody spoke to me. Friday was a good student. He was clever and he was improving quickly. Soon, he could say some words like an Englishman. Of course, not all the words, but the words which he said correctly made me very happy. I saw that Friday very often repeated a lot what I said. I think that it also helped him to learn so fast. I thought learning a language is quite easy. You only need to copy what you hear and if you don't understand something, you need a picture of it. Then you need a lot of practice. This is the best system. Friday's progress was fast. He was able to talk more and more every day. In a couple of months, we could have a basic simple conversation. Friday liked my tools. They were very interesting for him. He especially liked the telescope. He borrowed the telescope very often. He went to the one of the hills and he watched everything around. Once I asked him about his people and how he became a prisoner, he told me that they ate human meat like their opponents. In fact, in the past he did a ritual on the other side of my island. He was probably one of the cannibals who I saw a long time ago. He told me about the sea and the currents in the sea. Thanks to Friday, I learned about the history, culture and tradition of his people. 
Chapter 24 Knife I told Friday my personal story and I described England and Europe to him. I told him about our cities, schools, ships and traveling around the world. I told him that education was important in Europe and that we studied from books. It was all new to him. Friday's people didn't need schools on the islands. They had all what they needed for their life. When I felt that I could trust him enough, I showed him how gunpowder worked. I taught him how to use a gun. I gave him a knife and a belt. He was happy with my presence. He said that he saw a similar knife before. I asked him to tell me more. He explained that his people saved white men from a small boat and that they still lived with them. He counted 17 Europeans who lived with his people. I thought that these men could be the sailors from the ship which came to my island some time ago. They probably saved themselves in a boat. I didn't find anybody alive when I went on board. Friday told me that they were okay. I was happy to hear that some Europeans lived not very far from my island. I started to plan how to meet the Europeans. The next day, we went on an island, a small trip around the island. First, we went to the cross, where I wanted to mark another day. What is it? asked Friday when we came to the cross. I explained that we have seven days in a week. These days were Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday are also called weekend. When Friday heard the word Friday, he laughed. I explained to him that I saved him on Friday. That is why I called him Friday. Now, he fully understood the meaning of his name. During the walk, Friday told me, If we build a canoe and go to my island, I will tell my people how would how you saved my life? I took Friday to other side of the island. I showed him my canoe there, but he said this canoe is too small for the two people. We have to make a bigger canoe. So we started making a bigger canoe. We had to cut a big tree, and I showed him how to cut the inside and form a canoe. It took us a month to do this and two days to move it to the beach. The canoe was ready and we were ready too. The day before we wanted to go, Friday went to the beach. He came back very quickly. He looked very scared. Before I asked him what happened, he said that there were three canoes on the beach. He was scared because he thought the cannibals came to find him. He said, There is a war between two groups of local people. We are neighbors, but we don't like each other. We had many conflicts in the past. There was never peace. We kill each other whenever we can. When they see me, they will kill me. I told him, Don't worry. We are strong, and maybe they didn't come for you today. We will see. We took 15 guns. We went on top of a hill. We saw 14 cannibals, two prisoners and three canoes on the beach. They stopped close to the place where the forest was near the beach. Thanks to this, it was easier to attack the cannibals and save the prisoners. We went to them quietly through the forest. I thought about my right to kill the cannibals. I had no reason to shoot so many people who did nothing wrong to me. After some thinking, I decided only to watch an 
attack the cannibals only if it was necessary. Chapter 25 Father When we were very close to the beach, we saw that the cannibals were around the fire. They started eating it, the first of their prisoners. The second prisoner was still alive. He wasn't one of Friday's people. He was European. The cannibals wanted to eat him too. I decided to save him if it was possible. We moved closer to the cannibals, but we were still hidden behind the trees. Twelve cannibals were still around the fire, but two cannibals went for the white man. When I saw this, I prepared the guns and I asked Friday to do the same. Then we fired quickly at the cannibals from six guns. We killed three and seriously injured two of the cannibals. The first jumped up, but they didn't know where to run. They didn't know from which direction the danger came. Some men ran to their canoes, some cannibals stayed on the beach. We continued to shoot and we shot three other cannibals. After that, we took our guns and we ran to the beach. We shouted very loud. I ran to the prisoner and Friday shot the nearest cannibal. I freed the European. He said something in Spanish to me. I gave him a gun. He was weak, but he could shoot from a gun if some cannibal attacked him. The cannibals were shocked by our sudden attack. Our unusual guns scared them a lot. Only two cannibals tried to fight us. We shot them with our guns. Friday fought very well. He quickly killed one cannibal who was injured. The second injured cannibal ran into the forest. Friday ran after him and killed and he killed him with his knife. Only three cannibals were able to run away. They jumped into their canoe and they stayed. They started to leave. Friday shot at the cannibals, but he didn't hit them. It was dangerous to let them go because they could tell their people about us. We wanted to jump into one canoe and follow the cannibals. But to our surprise, we found another man on the bottom of the canoe. He was scared. He didn't see the fight. He only heard it. Ropes around his neck were very tight. He was in great pain and it was difficult for him to breathe. I quickly cut the ropes. When Friday saw him, he started crying. Then he left and he hugged the man. Then he jumped and began dancing around him. Then he cried and left at the same time. When the strongest emotions were gone, Friday told me that the prisoner was his father. I felt tears in my eyes when I saw the son's love for his father. This happy incident delayed us and the cannibals were already gone. Friday messaged his father's hands and fit to bring more blood to them. Soon his father felt much better. When they talked, talked, Friday suddenly jumped up and ran to the forest as fast as he could. When he came back, he had a bottle, of, bottle full of fresh water. He gave the water to his father, who was extremely thirsty. After he drank, I asked Friday to give the rest of the water to the Spanish. He needed water very much too. The Spanish thanked me a lot. He couldn't walk. He was very weak. I asked Friday to message his feet too. It helped him. Then I asked the Spanish to go with Friday's help to the canoe. We wanted to take them to our house. However. Friday was young and strong. He had a lot of power. 
he just took the Spanish on his back and carried him to the canoe. Then he carefully put him inside the canoe. Chapter 26 Dinner When the Spanish was inside the canoe, Friday jumped out of the canoe and he pushed it along the beach. We soon reached the place where I saved Friday. Friday helped our new guests out of the canoe, but they weren't able to walk. We had to carry our guests to our home. We had another problem when we reached our house. Friday's father and the Spanish couldn't go over the fence. I thought about the solution. I wanted to pull them over the fence. But then I realized that cannibals were already gone. We could stay outside the fence. We made a tent for our guests outside the fence. We prepared soft beds for them too. When we finished this, I started cooking dinner. Friday brought some fish and we cooked the fish quickly. We had dinner together in the tent. Friday translated for me because the Spanish could speak Friday's language. I asked Friday to go back to the beach after the dinner. He brought back the weapons which we left in a hurry. I also asked him to bury the bodies of the killed cannibals the next day. He did as I said. I spoke with Friday's father the next morning. I wanted to know that what he thought about the cannibals. I asked, will they return? Will they attack us? He said, they will probably never attack us. The guns created a great shock. They couldn't understand how we ran. How we won. I heard them shout that you and Friday were spirits sent from heaven. I still worried that the cannibals could return, but it never happened. When our guests were strong enough, I began to think about the journey by sea again. I asked the Spanish about his arrival on these islands. He, he said that he was on a ship which went to Havana. There were 16 Europeans on Friday's island. They were Spanish and Portuguese. He told me that the storm broke the ship near my island. They saved my, themselves in a boat. Now they lived with Friday's people. I asked the Spanish if they tried to make another sea journey. Of course, they wanted to go home, but they had no tools to build a ship. I showed the Spanish the tools, which I had from the ship. He said that with my tools it was possible to build a ship. I thought that the Spanish and Friday's father could return to the, their island. They could tell other Europeans about the possibility to build a ship. Together we could go to Brazil or Havana or maybe Europe. However, the Spanish wanted something else. He said, it will be better if we wait for half a year. There isn't enough food for 16 other men on the island. We won't have enough food to eat when we build the ship. I agreed with him. He and Friday's father helped us expand the fences and fields. We caught more goats. We increased the number of goats to 50 animals. We collected a lot of fruit. Then we dried the fruit. We also started preparing the materials for the ship. We chose a few trees. I showed the others how to cut the trees. Then we formed them into long and thin pieces. In half a year we had a lot of food. We had a lot of corn. We needed more baskets and pots for the corn. 
We saw that the Spanish was very good at making baskets. He had a great talent. His baskets were excellent. He also used a special technique to make baskets. The technique was fast and effective. He made the baskets three times faster than me. I asked him to teach me his skills. I wasn't as fast as him, but I was faster than before. Chapter 27 Englishman We put all the food in my cave. It was safe there. Then the Spanish and Friday's father could go back. They could bring the other men here. We gave them food and four guns in case they were attacked again. Then they took the canoe and they went away. Two days passed since they left when something unexpected happened. I was woken up by Friday at about six o'clock in the morning. Are they here? I asked Friday. He said, not yet, but somebody else is here. I saw a boat. I went to the top of the nearest hill. I saw the boat. It was clear that these people weren't the friends who we expected. The boat came from a completely different direction. I could also see a ship. I knew this shape. The ship was English. I was confused. It was true that I was happy to see Englishmen after 27 years on the island, but I was also worried. The island wasn't near ways of English ships. Also, there were no storms recently. So, why were they here? Maybe the men were pirates. Maybe they wanted to hide something on the island. I decided to be very careful. Friday and I stayed hidden and we watched the visitors for a while. The boat came to the beach and I counted 11 men. Soon I saw that they were all Englishmen. Three of the men had hands tied together. The eight other men took them to the beach. Two prisoners were calm, but the third prisoner tried to say something. He looked very scared. He asked the man in the boat for something. When Friday saw this, he returned to me and told me that Englishmen also ate people. I told him that they definitely didn't plan to eat the prisoners. I thought that they wanted to shoot them. After a while, I noticed that this wasn't their plan. The man from the boat started to explore the island. The three tied prisoners sat on the beach with two men as guards. The prisoners looked hopeless. I remembered my arrival on the island. I also felt those first exactly like those prisoners. Low tide came soon. The level of the sea was low. Their boat was on the sand. They couldn't move the boat. I heard them shout to each other. We will leave with the next high tide. This gave us some hours. Friday and I stayed hidden until dark. Then I noticed that the man who stood the guard started to sleep. The three prisoners sat under a tree quite close to us. It looked like they were also quite far from the other sailors. We could come closer to them. When we were very close to the prisoners, I spoke quietly to them. We were still hidden behind the trees and they couldn't see us. When they heard my noise, they couldn't believe that somebody spoke English to them from the dark forest. What was that? asked one of the men. I heard something. I heard a tree speak, answered the other. But it's impossible. A tree can't speak English. Yes, you heard something, but it is not a tree, I said quietly. My name is Robinson Crusoe. I am an Englishman. I lived on this island. I will help you if you tell me who you are. 
After the first shocking moment, one man answered my question. He was the captain of the ship, but some of the sailors criticized him and they started a rebellion. He, his assistant and one passenger became prisoners. The other sailors wanted to leave them here to die. The captain said, the truth is that there are only two dangerous sailors who control the others in the group. 80% of them are still loyal to me. If the leaders are coughed, the rest will return under my control. Chapter 28 Control I said, I am willing to help you, but I have one condition. I want full control over the ship. If we manage to get it back, the captain and the other two prisoners agreed and they gave me full control over the ship and over their lives. We freed the prisoners. Then we went back to the forest. I gave them guns. We started planning the attack. In the middle of our conversation, we noticed that the sailors who stood guard were broken up. They stood up. They shouted to three other men who were near to them. At that moment, we shot the guards. Then the captain spoke to the three other men. He told the men to be loyal to him and helped him get back to the ship. They agreed and we tied them and left them on the beach. The other three men who heard the shots came back. They saw that the situation changed. We were five. We had a lot of guns. The situation was bad for them. They also agreed to be loyal to the captain. We tied these men too. We hid our six prisoners in the forest. Then I and the captain had finally time to talk to each other. I told him my story and he was shocked. He also thanked me a lot, of, a lot for my help. He and his two friends were hungry. We so we went to my house. I showed them what I built during my years on the island. They were surprised by all things which I had. However, we didn't have much time to explore my home. We had to plan how to get back the ship. There were 16 people on board and we were only 5. First, we decided to take everything out of the boat. We thought that the sailors could send another boat to the island if the men from the first boat didn't come back with the next high tide. In the morning, we heard the ship fire a gun as a signal for the boat to return. After a while, the ship fired a few times again. There was no response. Then we noticed that the sailors took another boat and went to the beach. We saw eight men and they all had guns. The captain told me that six of the men were still loyal to him, but there was also the man who started the rebellion. The captain thought that it was difficult to beat them, but I told him that we had a good chance to win, but we had to act quickly. The captain trusted two of our prisoners. They promised to fight on our side. We gave them weapons. We were prepared with seven men ready to fight. We waited for the arrival of the boat. When the boat reached the beach, the men jumped out of the boat. They pulled the boat on the beach. Then they ran to the other boat. They were surprised when they saw the boat empty. They tried to call their friends. They shouted. Then they shot in the air, but it was all useless. Nobody shouted back. The sailors were confused. They didn't understand the situation. They started putting the boat into the water again. It looked like they wanted to go back to the ship to inform the others that there was a problem. When the captain saw this, he was afraid that they could go back to the ship and leave the island forever. Fortunately, in a few seconds, 
The sailors changed their plan. Now they left three men in the boat. The other five men went to the forest to look for their friends. Chapter 29 We continued watching all the actions of both groups. The five men in the forest sat down under a tree. They discussed what to do. They even argued a little. After a long conversation under the tree, they got up. Then they walked to the beach. They probably gave up looking for their friends. We had to do some action quick, quickly. It was important to do something before they reached their boat. I had a plan. I told the assistant to go with Friday more to the center of the island and shot at the sailors. When the sailors heard this, they shouted back, then they started going in the direction of the voice. Friday and the assistant continued shouting back. They started to take the sailors to the opposite side of the island. This strategy worked as I planned. The five men were soon very far from the beach. This was very good for us. We went to the three men in the boat. We explained the situation to them. They decided not to fight us. They became our prisoners too. After some time, Friday and the assistant returned. They went with the sailors, very far from the beach. The sailors couldn't return sooner than in two hours. We hid and we waited for them. They were very tired. When they returned, first they went to the boat. They were surprised when they didn't find the three sailors. They started calling their friends, but nobody answered. The leader and two other men started to walk to the forest where we hid. The captain and Friday attacked them when they were close to us. The leader was killed immediately. The second man was injured. The third man ran back to the boat. Then we all went out of the forest. We ran to the boat. The captain spoke to sailors. He asked them to give up. When the sailors understood the situation, they dropped their weapons quickly. We decided to tie the prisoners, but we didn't tie all of them. The captain trusted three of the men. We didn't tie these three men. Now we were ten men. We started to plan how to get the sheep. After some discussion, we knew what to do. Friday and I stayed on the island. We had to watch the prisoners. The captain, his assistant and the passenger took the clothes of some of the prisoners. They wanted to look like them. Then the captain and the sailors took the boat. They went to the ship. When they were near the ship, they spoke to the men on the ship. They told them that it wasn't possible to find the other men. When all of the men from the boat were on the ship, the captain showed himself and the attack began. Some sailors were injured in the battle. Only one person was shot. It was the second leader of the rebellion. When the captain had his sheep again, he heard seven shots. It was the signal that the sheep it is in captain's hands again. I was happy when I heard the shots. Soon the captain went back to the island. We hugged each other. He told me that the sheep was now under my control. I was so happy. I started crying so much that I wasn't able to speak. It took me some time before I could stop crying. Then I was able to speak again. I spoke to the captain. I told him now I happy how happy I am I was. The captain orders his men to bring a lot of food from the ship. We had a nice meal. We celebrated our victory and my departure from the island. We drank expensive wine. We ate pork, beef and vegetables. We ate biscuits for dessert, dessert. I was very happy when I tasted this food again. The captain gave me clean clothes. 
I didn't wear clothes for a long time. The clothes were very light. They were a little comfort uncomfortable first, but it was soon fine. When the party finished, we discussed what to do with the five prisoners who the captain didn't trust. The men were really horrible. The captain didn't want to take the men on board the ship as prisoners. They were too dangerous. I told him to discuss the situation with them. Maybe they wanted to stay on the island. It was better for them because their rebellion meant that meant that in England. We went to the men and we explained the situation. They had to choose between a death in England and a life on the island. I thought that it was fair to let them decide. They decided to stay on the island. We put them in the cave. The cave was now the prison. I told them to wait for more orders. Chapter 30 Sun I needed some time to prepare for the journey. I had to think about what to take with me. In fact, I didn't need to take many things. I decided to take my dog, my parrot, my book and some other small things. I also took the money, gold and silver which I found in the ships. They were finally useful to me. I met with the prisoners again. I showed them my corn and my animals and I told them about the island. Then I went on board the ship. We left the island on the 19th of December 1686. It was 27 years, 2 months and 19 days since I first stood on the island. First we went to the island where Fridays people lived. The Spanish and Portuguese sailors were very happy when they saw us. They were happy that we had a ship. Now we didn't have to build a new ship. We could go to Europe. My dog was very happy too. When he saw one of the Spanish sailors, he ran to him very quickly. He jumped on him. He was extremely happy. The Spanish sailor was his owner. He was very happy too. He started to cry when he saw his dog. It was a very emotional meeting. The sailors started to prepare for our journey across the ocean. Friday had to make a decision. He could stay with his people or he could go to Europe with me. He needed some time to think about it. We stayed on the island one night. In the morning I asked Friday if he made a decision. He told me that he wanted to go with me to Europe. He prepared everything for the journey. We were ready to go. We started our journey. Two months later, after a safe journey across the ocean, we arrived to London. London was the capital of England. For me, it was after 35 years. It looked like the whole world changed in that time. London was a different city. There were some new houses, streets, roads, shops, parks and big, br big bridge across the river. But it wasn't all. People also changed. They had different clothes. Women had different hairstyle. Men had different hats and new types of guns. People used new tools which I didn't see before. They had new games, new names for these tools. It was all very interesting. The style of music in the pubs was also different. I heard new songs. I liked this new style. I wanted to sing these new songs. From London I returned to my town, York. My parents were both dead. I found some relatives. My sister, my uncle and my aunt were still alive. They were happy to see me. But they thought that I was long dead, so I had no rights to families, money or land, but I could stay and live in their house. England was a big shock to a Friday. Everything was so new for him. He saw so many things for the first time in his life. It was all very interesting for him. 
he liked this new experience. What he didn't like was the cold weather in winter. It was February. Snow, ice, freezing weren't good for him. It wasn't logical to him why we lived in such conditions. I told him that in summer the weather is much better. I sent a letter to Brazil. I still knew the address very well. I wanted to contact people in Brazil. I wanted to know if my wife was still alive. I wanted to know if my plantation still existed, but I didn't know what to expect. The connection was broken many years ago. In May, I got a letter and some packets from my wife. She wrote that she was waiting for 10 years. Then she stopped believing that I was alive. She married again and she had a family. But her new husband died two years ago. I also got a letter from my wife's father. He took care of my plantation. In his letter, he wrote detailed calculations of the expenses and profit from the plantation during all these years. They both sent me many nice presents. They sent some nice skins and a little box full of gold. They also sent me some boxes of sugar to sell. My wife had also a big surprise for me. She wrote that I had a son. It was great news. He was born eight months after I left Brazil. He was now a big man and he wanted to meet me. So many things happened to me in a short time. It was shocking. I wanted to cry. Then I wanted to laugh. All the emotions were too much for me. I wasn't able to be calm. I stood up. I sat down. I stood up again. I walked around the room. I left. Then I cried again. When I was calm a little, I started to think about what to do. Chapter 31 Brazil I thought about moving back to Brazil. I wanted to see my son, my wife and my plantation. After some longer thinking, I decided to go to Brazil but only for a visit. I wanted to see if I could live there again. I wrote to my wife. I asked her if it was okay to visit them for some days. With the letter, I sent nice presents to her and her father's family. Then I got a letter from my wife. She wrote that I was welcome to visit them. Her invitation made me happy. I started to plan another journey by sea. I bought nice presents for them. Two weeks later, I was ready to go. When we arrived to Brazil, I met with my wife and my son. She changed a lot, but she was still very beautiful. My son was a big man now. He was very intelligent. He had his own family too. He had also big responsibility. He managed plantations of all the family. He was responsible for a big land. My son spoke only Portuguese and a little Spanish. My Portuguese wasn't very good after so many years. I forgot many words. I remembered only some basic phrases. But with practice I started to remember the words fast. After two weeks, I could have a basic conversation on many topics, and one month later I was able to speak fluently, automatically. I was very happy that I could speak with my wife and my son. We had so many things for a conversation. Soon after I arrived to Brazil, we had a big party. It was a celebration of my son's birthday and also my arrival to Brazil. Brazil also changed a lot. Many things were different from what was in my memory. Plantations were much bigger. Many people worked on the plantations. I was with my family for three months. I knew that I wasn't I wasn't very far from my island. I started thinking about visiting the island again. 
I wanted to see the island for some days. Friday also wanted to see the island again. My son also wanted to go. I thought that it wasn't a good idea. I knew how dangerous the sea could be, but he wanted to see the place which he knew only from my stories. We planned our journey. Two weeks later, we left Brazil. We went on a ship which went to Havana. We had an agreement with the captain to stop at my island on the way there. When I arrived my island, we met with Friday's people. They now lived on the island. I asked them what happened to the prisoners. Did you eat them? They told me that they didn't eat Europeans. They ate only their enemies from other islands. They told me that when they came to the island, the prisoners were dead. They probably killed each other. I wanted to stay on the island and my son too. I asked the captain if he could pick us up on the way back. He agreed. I saw many children who ran around. It was interesting to see many people on the island where I lived alone for so many years. I saw that the people on the island were very happy. Friday was happy there too. He met a woman who he liked very much. Friday asked me what I thought about his staying on the island. He knew that I saved his life in the past. He didn't want to leave me without asking me. I agreed. I saved him, but he didn't have to stay with me all his life. It was time for Friday to start his own family. I was happy that he found a good woman. I was happy when I saw that they were in love. I respected Friday's decision to stay on the island with this woman. I walked around the island a lot. I wanted to visit all the places which I knew from my life on the island. I had some favorite places. For example, the Fruit Valley, I spent a lot of time there. I liked this place very much. My son liked the island too. He often walked around the island with me. I told him many stories about my life here. We stayed on the island for 20 days. Then the ship from Havana came. It was time to leave. We said goodbye to Friday and his people. When we left the island, I had a strange feeling. I also felt tears in my eyes. I liked this place very much. It was my home for a long time. I thought I will never see this place again. This is the end of the story. If you enjoyed the video, please hit a like and subscribe to my channel.